This is a corner chamfering device. It's especially useful for delicate or small projects where using a router or table saw aren't practical. It makes it possible to chamfer the corners of little things like this with very little risk to either your fingers or the workpiece. How it works is by positioning a belt sander on its back and then you run the pieces through the top at exactly a 45 degree angle. I came up with this design a few years ago for a project and I threw it together real quick but it's turned out to be way more useful than I had ever expected. In this video I'm going to attempt to improve on its design since I'd like to keep it around. I'm going to make a few changes that hopefully make it a little easier to use like a height adjustment first off because presently the only way to adjust the height is by either driving in these screws or backing them out and it's cumbersome and time consuming. I would also like to find a more practical way to secure the base easier and I'd like to be able to slide it back and forth so that it doesn't wear out only one spot in the belt. The last thing that I would like to address is on the top. Friction has caused it to wear in the center so I'd like to re replace it with a material that's better suited to friction and I'm planning on using polyethylene. Well I hope you enjoy the video. Okay the first thing that I did was made this complicated device. It's a cradle that secures the belt sander flat and stable. And hopefully your belt sander won't require that you go through so much trouble but this model is a Makita and it was very difficult to get it to level. Now all this does is strap in with two pieces of rubber roofing and that makes it nice and secure. Okay I'm going to start this project with two pieces of birch three-quarter laminated plywood. I started by cutting them both 19 inches and unfortunately I have to biscuit these pieces together because I don't have the thickness that I require. So when you're doing a biscuit you need a nice flat surface. I'm lucky enough to have a big chunk of granite that's left over from a sink cutout and it's really convenient for doing biscuiting. So start by putting a mark on each of the pieces everywhere that you would like to put a biscuit. So line up the front notch on the biscuit cutter with the pencil mark and run your biscuits. The clamps on the top are only applying pressure for the glue joint. But we want to keep it flat to our piece of granite as well. Don't be afraid to use lots of clamps. They don't do any good sitting over there in the corner. Because of the magic of the internet, we can remove these clamps after only three seconds, but I recommend that you leave your clamps to set up all night. Now that we have a flat base to build it on, we can start to plan the dimensions. Because this is a 3 inch belt sander, we know that its range of motion for the sliding back and forth has to be an inch and a half in each direction. This requires a slot to be cut in the support rail for the cord. I'll show you pictures of the dimensions that I used. We also need to determine the rip height of the support rails so we know what size to cut them. By setting the belt sander on its back and putting the prototype table flat on it, if we measure up from the base to the bottom of this support bracket, we get 4 and 7 eighths. With the support rail cut to 4 and 7 eighths, it will only allow the deck to go down as low as the belt sander. That will be at zero position. In order to adjust the height of the deck later, we'll twist the thumb screws and that'll set the size of the chamfer by raising it up.
Cutting laminated plywood can be tricky, especially when you're making a cross cut, but you can reduce tear out a couple pretty easy ways. The easiest is using a new blade, but also just letting the top of the blade stick out about a sixteenth of an inch will help a lot. If you're really concerned with tear out and you want to be really careful, you can make a knife cut first, or you can cover the entire area that you're going to cut with masking tape. Now I've set my rip fence for 4 and 7 eighths so I can cut my support brackets. The shape of the notch for the cord that sticks out of the back of the belt sander isn't centered on this support rail because of the shape of the motor that protrudes out of the side of it. Make sure your piece is clamped to reduce the tear out when you're drilling. And get a fresh battery. If you make cuts through the laminate, then you don't have to use a sacrificial block. Nice tip if you'd like to make your own drum sanding wheels is to apply some spray adhesive to the wheel. And take some of the self adhesive sandpaper. Make sure you wind it nice and tight into a tight spool before you apply it and it helps it to stay secure. I figure as fast as I use these and in so many different sizes, this is a great alternative to buying the pads. hand sanding and I got it nice and smooth and you can see that its range of motion is just about perfect at the zero position and then as the device lifts up it still stays right where we want it to be. Now the lift on the device is only going to be three-eighths of an inch at the most so this is plenty of play. I'm going to cut the unnecessary material away in these corners so it's easier to turn the thumb screw. <laughs> 